Hello everyone, my name is Sick, and today I'll be playing Invisible Ink. Now, for those of you who don't know what this game is about, it's basically a roguelike stealth espionage game where you infiltrate corporations, but you're on a on a countdown timer. Basically, you have around 72 hours to infiltrate um, as many corporations as you can, tech up, and then basically prepare yourself for the final mission. And it is a hard game, but there is no none of the random number generation here that um, typifies games like XCOM. So everything you do, it's like really fair. It's, everything is predictable. You know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen, or you can. But you know, we'll get into that as we play the game. And um, yeah, let's uh, start a new game here. Play the story. I'm going to be playing on expert mode, without any rewinds. So we'll be on Iron Man. No level retries, and I'm not going to touch any of the settings, so I'll just be playing a vanilla campaign on expert mode. Um, yeah, let's watch the cutscene. Get to the main server, collect the data, and get out. No detours. Copy that, Central. Proceeding to target. Oh. Insertion was clean. Alarm level holding steady. We need to get to the third floor. We can make our way to the server room from there. Any chatter on the comms? Negative. It's silent on all frequencies. They should have detected us by now. Receiving very one transmission. They're on to you. Get out! Get out of there! HQ compromised. We're going to need an extraction. I've got Incognita. Deckard and International are on their way. Get to the roof. I'll cover you. Go! Decker, how long till extraction? 30 seconds. Get us out of here. We've got work to do. Alright, so the corporations turned the tables on us. We are now on the run, they're trying to hunt us down, and so basically we have to do uh, a desperate counter-attack, which will be the final mission. Um, yeah, so we have to prepare as best as we can for that final assault, and then hope we do well enough on the preparation to actually finish it, because it is going to be hard as balls. Like I said, this game is a, a roguelike game, which means you probably will lose a whole lot. Um, so normally... When you first boot up the game, you only start with Decker and International. Uh, I unlocked most of the other characters here, but I'm just going to be playing with these two characters for now. What's interesting as well is that these guys also have uh, an on-file version and an archive version. So the difference there is that they get different um, abilities, basically. So for Decker, he has his items and augments. His basic uh, item is Neural Networking. It allows agents to uncover demons in adjacent objects. And so demons are basically um, um, yeah, a trap that can be set on hackable items. And if you hack these, they will, will sometimes activate the demon, which will have all kinds of negative consequences for you. But with Decker, you can see um, basically if there's a demon on any object that he's close to. 
He has the Neural Disruptor, which is your basic weapon, which has a, a 3 turn cooldown and can knock a guard out for 2 turns. Which means he'll wake up before you can use it again, so you better make sure you get out of there. Engaging guards really is not really a, is not a good idea in this game. You want to avoid them as much as you can. And then he has the modded cloaking rig, which allows him to turn invisible for the next until the next turn or if they attack, basically. And it's on an eight turn cooldown, so it's going to take a long, long, long time. But if you switch to the archive version, um, he gets different statistics. So you have a sensory injector. Many a guard have caught a glimpse of Decker. None have caught him. Gets the agent plus two AP when seen by the enemy, including peripheral vision. So now that means that he can move more and more. And then he has still the same old neural disruptor, and he has a refurbished revolver, which kills a guard, but does not pierce enemy armor, because that would be OP, I guess. But really, killing guards is not um, a good idea in this game. I'll just be using the on file version. And then International, she has the wireless emitter, which allows her to hack items from a distance and through walls. And it automatically reveals nearby mainframe objects. So everything that has like uh, anything that can be hacked or like any electronics that can be used, you'll see it through the through walls and stuff without having to go into the room. And she has a neural disruptor as well, but her archive version gets the network siphon. It generates power when the alarm level increases. So the way that works is um, Basically, as soon as you get into any map, there is an alarm level, it goes up as you play. And there are se several levels, and with each level there is a new... Um, basically, in the first level, a few extra cameras will activate, I think, or all the cameras will activate, while well, they will be off from the start. Then on the second level, things get harder to hack, they ha their cost increases, and then uh, guards start entering the, the facility and it just gets worse and worse and worse as you stay longer and longer. So there is a... everything about this game is basically on a, on a countdown timer. Alright, so finally we have the programs. Um, there are several. They all do different things, of course. I haven't unlocked every one of them, but there are a few that I know and like. So I, I usually take power drip and then Power Drip and Lockpick are the default ones. So this one gives you one power per turn, and power is what you use to hack anything, everything. And then the Lockpick is breaks one firewall for two power, but I'm going to take Parasite. And a Parasite, it will basically infect the firewall. The first time you use it, it will be uh, free of charge, it doesn't cost any power, but if you use multiple uh, bugs at the or Parasites at the same time, their power cost increases. So if I turn, if I use this one time and I want to use it a second time in the same turn, then it will cost one power. If I want to use it another time, it will cost two power to use and then three power, etc, etc. Alright, so I'm going to use uh, Power Drip and Parasite and then basically the default characters and let's begin. It's 2074 and corporations rule the world with brutal efficiency. They hit you hard and now you're on the run. You need to strike back, but you'll never win by force. Keep your agents alive with stealth and cunning. Read the cor raid the corpse facilities for tools and support, and prepare your team for the final showdown. The odds are stacked against you. You will fail repeatedly. I know this by ha by first-hand experience. But each time you will learn more about your adversaries, and every restart generates a new world of dangers and opportunities. This game is, after all, completely randomly generated. You have a tough job ahead of you, operator. Don't let us down. All right. Let's get to it. Day one. Operator, are you there? Good. I was afraid you didn't make it out. Headquarters is gone. Most of our agents have been captured or killed, and our accounts all frozen. I don't know how the corporations found us, but you can bet they won't give up now that they've had a taste of blood. The jet's stealth rig should keep us hidden if we keep moving, but Incognita can't survive long on backup power. She's got 72 hours tops. We need to mount a counterattack before then, or we'll be defenseless against their scans. If that happens, we may as well just crash this thing into the ocean. You've never seen the inside of a corporate deprogramming chamber. I won't see the inside of another. Incognita is scanning for targets of opportunity where we can replenish our supplies. Follow her leads and gather what resources you can. I'll run through our contacts and see what favors I can call in. We're going to need all of the advantages we can find in the coming days. 
so incognita is the the computer program that allows us to hack everything basically and C is vital to our survival but C is on the battery so in 72 hours incognita will shut off forever so we need to basically in the final mission you need to plug in incognita into a new power source at one of the um, uh, yeah basically at, at your final enemy's location or his base Alright, so as you can see we have um, 72 hours remaining, it's day one, the timer has begun, but for the first um, mission there's only one choice, and after we finish this one, we will get several options to, to pick from, and they will all have different advantages, and um, basically it's up to, uh, up to us to choose what we want to do, when we want to do it. So we have a, a credits, 500 credits, it's not a whole lot. And then the net worth, it's the value of all of agents, upgrades, items, programs and credits. That is owned by Invisible Inc, which is our our company, basically. But for now, we'll Executives just... Executives uh, are notoriously slack when it comes to network security, and their terminals are full of interesting information. We found a lightly guarded executive complex here. Get in, find the computer and steal their contact list. Then we'll have our pick of future targets. Right, so we'll go to Bogota for the first mission. There is, um, basically, the, the first mission is the same every time. There is an uh, an item we need to hack and steal, uh, like a a plan from, like a plan of all different kinds of locations and stuff. It's actually quite possible to lose this mission because, like I said, it is a roguelike. It is a hard game. The first mission does not guarantee success in any way. But we'll give it our best try. Bad news, Operator. They caught us completely by surprise, so we have no firepower with us. The guards' weapons are gene-coded to their owner and useless to us. We're going to have to make do with what we can find along the way. We've beamed you through the security grid. You should be somewhere near the target, but you'll need to look for it. Get the list and find a transport pad to escape. But be quick about it. They noticed a disturbance when we ported in and their alarm level is already rising. Right, locate executive terminals and get out alive. Secondary objectives, find and steal corporate credits. We want to do that as much as possible, basically. Okay, so we're in game. Uh, on the right here, you can see the security level. Right now it's at zero. It takes five turns until it reaches um, security level one, then another five for security level two, etc, etc. Um, up until six, I think, but after that, new guards keep coming in and they will be searching the level, they'll be ready and alerted to our presence and it's got, things are going to get very tough. Okay, so we have Decker and International here. Decker has more AP, which are action points, and every move basically takes one action point, so moving to here takes two action points etc etc and the neat thing is when you move somewhere or when you hover over a location you can see how many AP a character will have left by the time he gets there so if I move into this corner here Decker will have four AP left right so at the moment I can only see the one door that I can open the other door is a security door and I need a security card for for me to be able to open it basically so I'm going to move in front of the door. I'm going to have a peek. I don't see anything here right now, which is okay, that's good. Move through, move into the corner. Now I'm curious. You can see I, I just spotted a camera over here. It's not active. Um, but I can't go in this direction, so I could have a peek and see what's in there, but at the moment I really just want to get as far into the map as I can. So I'll just move behind a little table here. Okay, so I've, so I've found another thing. So you have the console here, it can give you a power, or extra power basically. And the power level I have is like 10 out of 20 at the moment. So I can, uh, her special ability is to be able to hack this stuff from a distance, so I'll just hijack this thing, which gives me two extra power, and I'll end my first turn. Alright, so I heard some footsteps. Yeah, okay. I heard some footsteps, it looks to me like there will be a guard over here, so I'll just select Decker and have a peek. 
there's nobody there actually now I could move through here but it's going to activate an alarm which will be bad so I have to try and find the uh, power source basically the, the thing that powers this uh, you know I'll hijack this one as well but yeah if I find a power source I can turn it off I can hack it and um, turn this off and move through here basically alternatively I might find a way around probably if I go through this door I can probably get into this room back here and I'll just be able to move around uh, the obstacle that in this way so let's have a look opening doors doesn't cost any AP luckily but peeking does okay so yeah I can move around here there's not a security door over there I might be able to steal something from a guard, but I don't know yet. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to see. So... I'm curious. I'm going to go in here, close the door. And have a peek to see what's over there. Looks like a dead end. Which is interesting. And then... International... Or internationally, I don't know. Ah, okay, I found uh, the elevator. So there's uh, a four square elevator here, which I need to use for my extraction, basically. So it's good that I found this one by now. What's this? Se secondary server terminal. Alright, why not? It's going to be free of charge to hack it anyway. So end our turn here. Sometimes this can give you extra information, so it's always nice to nice to hack these things when you can, especially when it doesn't cost you anything. All right, close the door. Open the safe, which gave us 120 credits, so that's useful. What's inside here? Looks like this might be another dead end. Right, so ah, okay, so that's what this was. This is um, basically a store, an in-game store where you can buy upgrades for the in incognito system. So these are the ones I have. These are the ones I could buy. What does this do? Lowers tagged guard armor. All tagged guards have one minus one armor for one turn. Huh. That's actually pretty cool. That could be really useful in the late game. Or the mid game, actually. Ah, and then you have the, the lockpick, which breaks one firewall for two power. Which is like the original um, ability you could take with you. Mm, I'm not sure if I want this, actually. Because one turn... Uh, I don't know, it's going to be of limited use and it, it will take up all the money I have. So, I don't really want to be doing this. So there's a guard over in this room. Looks like this would be another dead end. Right, and so these doors you can see right here, this is where guards will spawn. If the security level gets up high enough. Um, let's have a peek. Oh wow, well. okay, so the power supply. I'm guessing this power supply is rigged to, to this thing right here. So I want to hack this one for sure. The nanofabricator is where you can buy um, buy upgrades and incognito programs and all this stuff. Let's hack the corporate safe as well, and I'll just leave this be because I don't I don't want to really buy anything right now. All right, so there's a guard here. I think this one is going to move, but you can see like the red tiles. This is where he has vision, and the yellow tiles. This is where I would be hidden from his view. And I'm going to use one AP to observe and predict this guard's movements for the next turn. He is stationary. That is really bad luck. Okay. That is bad. Because I have a feeling that I am going to have to go into this direction to get to my objective. And if he's stationary, I can't get past him without alerting him in any way. So... I can open the door, it's going to um, basically make him curious to see what's going on and he's going to check it out and then I can take him down with my 
um, what's it called again? The neural disruptor. So I'm going to be doing this, I think. You see that? Yeah, see? So now this yellow box basically means like he's going to go here next turn and investigate. And I'm going to be screwed if I keep if I don't get ready. So I'll go into ambush mode. As you can see, he's now ready to attack. Uh, I don't know if I want to wait for this, actually. As I said, I am on a countdown. And I don't know if I'm going to get enough credits out of here to make it worthwhile, so... You know what? I'll, uh, I'll get International to, to go back here. So this guy's ready. I'll hack the camera as well, just to make sure that I can move into the next turn. Oh man, that's not a guy here. That's not good. Ah, uh, so he didn't see. That's good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, so I hacked a lot of these things. So, I actually didn't explain this, but when you press spacebar, you get into this view, and this is where the view where you can hack things, obviously. Uh, we just reached security level 1, which means that now cameras are going active. They don't go active right away, as you can see, there's like, uh, they're rebooting at the moment. This is an empty room, so that's okay. This one already got hacked. This one is already on. I want to uh, hack this one. And probably this one as well. I have enough power to hack it. As you can see, by now it costs two power, because I've got several um, bugs going on at the same time. Parasites. But I have enough power to, to deal with that, so it's okay. Hack all the cameras and yeah, hopefully this will show us where we need to go. I have a feeling we have to be in here, in, in this space. Alright, so I'm going to try and steal from the knocked out card. I'm going to take his credits and I'm going to take a security card as well. So I can open up these red doors, that would be really, really, really useful. Okay, so I can't really move from here right now, which is too bad, because um, right now this guard is knocked out for two turns and this triangle it says it, it, it indicates that he's knocked out for two turns and it also says pin and it pin means that my character is pinning him to the floor and it basically when a character gets pinned down um, his knockout timer stays the same, it doesn't count down anymore, so if I stay put he's going to basically stay knocked out for the same duration as before and I have to do this anyway because I can't move out of sight I could move here but it's not going to get me closer to my objective and um, it's going to allow this guy to wake up sooner as well which I don't want so I'm going to let Decker stay put for now and I need internationality to hurry up and get back so I'll just be running her over to the, to the other side of the map as fast as I can So this guy is moving back and forth. That's really annoying. Alright, internationally, move up again. And what do I want to do with Decker? That's the question here. I'll hack the safe as well, and then the nanofabricator, because why not? Okay, I have to wait one more turn until I can use the Neural Disruptor again. I could move over here, because the guard is going to move all the way up here somewhere. And if I'm in here, he can't see me. You can see, like, when I hover over this tile, you can see the little three um, icons with, their, with the eyes. That means that I'm hidden from those directions. And luckily, these guys don't really see 180 degrees. They, they have a pretty narrow angle of view, which is good. If I move here, I get... I have free AP left. So I could steal from the safe, but I'm probably going to get spotted if I stay there. But if I then move here, I should stay out of sight, I think. Because I'm not going to be able to move in here or anything. But I need as much money as I can get as well, so... Uh, if I move... I don't have to move all the way over there, actually. I can move here and then move in here, probably. Yeah. I'm that's what I'm going to do. 
So it's still being a bit safe. Get another few credits. Ah, oh, actually, I could move all the way over there. That's really good. Okay, that's exactly what I want right there. All right, let's end the turn. As you can see, his, his field of view is pretty narrow. This guy is really annoying as well. Um, because I think he's stationary too, actually. Um, let's see. I can stay hidden from here, but I can't move there without being spotted. I want to get as close to this guard as possible, because like he's going to get, he's going to wake up in a turn, which would be bad. I need to get as close to to this room as I can. So that's um, yeah. I think I'll be okay if I wake up. If I stand over here, no. I think he's going to wake up in this next turn, and he's not going to do very much from the start. But I don't know. If I stay here, I should be I should be hidden from his sight. That would be that would be nice. And then with the last AP that I have left, I can predict this guy's movements, and he's stationary because of course. Wow, that's really inconvenient because it means I need to open this door. This guy, I need to, I can't touch this guy as well. I need this guy to move, and I just, so I need to open this door, and this guy needs to. Okay, you know what? I think I can stay over here, and the guard will move past me without actually noticing me. Like, this guard will move past me without actually noticing me, so. I'm going to move in this direction, I guess, and then first. Let's have a look at the Nano Fabricator. So my inventory is full right now. As you can see, these um, empty slots. There are empty slots, so I could put something in there, but it will uh, encumber me, and it will cost me 1 AP. Which is okay for Decker, because he has 1 AP more than International. So... What's this? Subdermal cloak. Replacing the top layer of skin. This circuitry converts the brain and muscle enhancers used in STIM to create a holographic projection. Renders the user invisible until the next turn. So it's basically the same thing that Decker already can do, but at a power cost. That's not so great. I don't really need this. I have. Uh, I could buy. E no, I c yeah, I could actually buy the econ chip. Collects credits from consoles instead of power. Oh, that's pretty good actually, because that means you could buy more stuff in the long in the long term. But it is a hell of an investment. Then you have the accelerated chip, but you need an anarchy skill level because like, all these all of these characters they have skill levels in four different categories as well. I think of which anarchy is one. I can't really use this right now. So then there's Met Gel, which you can it's a one-time use, you can only use it one time and then it's gone forever. But it re it revives a dying agent, because if you get shot, well, you need this to, to get someone back up, or you need to carry them to the elevator or leave them behind, which is really, really bad. And then there's the charge pack which refills a weapon's ammo or reduces an item's cooldown, but it also has only one use. So I don't want to buy this one. I don't want to buy this one. This one could be okay, but I don't really plan on getting caught, so... Of course, you never know when that's going to happen. Econ chip. I'm tempted to get this one, actually. But no. I think it's better to get the power, because if I hack a lot of things at the same time, then... Yeah. Alright, open you see the door. That? This guy's going to get distracted. I'll move this guy into ambush mode. And then end my turn. Yeah, okay. So this guy is actually... I can move around him. He's not going to be much of a problem. Uh, this is annoying. I didn't notice his camera until now. <sighs> I need to... Uh, I need to hack it. It's just going to take me another turn. Steal some credits, that would be good. And then, I'm not sure if this guard is going to move in such a way that he's going to spot Decker over here, so I want to drag the security guard out of the way. I'm going to move him down here, which should make us safer this, this first turn. And then, there is the issue of this character right here. 
because he just woke up he's going to be searching the building I don't know where where exactly he's going to be if I want to get over here I need to use all my AP and if I want to get over there I need to use all my AP as well but this is the only place where I can move safely and still stay out of sight from this character over there so uh, this is tough because I don't know where this guy is gonna go and if I want to predict his movements I can't get to this cover and I cannot get to this cover which means I had to st I would have to stay in this room or knock him out again mm. actually you know what no I can use Decker to can I no okay okay I know why uh, well, I know what's going on here, because before I could use uh, International to predict the, the gu this guard's movements while he was in this room, even though she didn't have any line of sight, or any direct line of sight, but of course we had a camera to, to view this guy, so that's why she could actually observe his movements, whereas Decker does not have any camera to observe this guard. That's really disappointing, actually. Uh, before I forget, oh yeah, we already hacked that camera, that's good. Okay, what am I going to do here? I think I'll. I think the safest bet is to just knock this guy out again. I'm not sure. If, I don't remember if it actually costs any uh, AP. If it does not take any AP, that would be perfect. No, I did not take any AP. It did move this guy in in a way, but I can close the door so this other guard can't see his body. And then I have enough AP left to move into cover over here. So that's perfect. This will be done in the next turn. So that's good. Uh, and I can just sneak past him as well. So that's really, really nice. Okay. Um, I'm going to drag the security guard in here to make sure he stays out of sight. And then I'm going to move Decker towards the door. That's an peek. executive terminal. It still has a solitaire game up on the screen. Right. So that's what we need. This is the this is our objective. This is the thing we need to hack. And I'm really fortunate actually because I did steal uh, a security key so I don't have to go past this guard again and I don't have to go past this other guard as well because I can now unlock this door close to our spawn and move to the exit from there which is over here so I should be able to move away from all of the the, the security guards that I knocked out because these guys are gonna wake up they're going to be very suspicious of course as you would be when you get knocked out and um, yeah let's see if I can this leaves me with one AP, and if I move here, I need four. One, two, okay. So I can steal money from the safe and move into cover over here, I think. That would be really good. Yeah. So I'm going to be safe for another turn. But this guy's countdown timer is going to go down, so that's really bad. Hijack the, the console as well over there. Alright, and turn. And so now uh, we're running into the problem alarm where we reach alarm level 2 increased. and all the Data firewalls cost just went up. Oh man, and I forgot to hack the terminal. That is really, really bad. I should have not forgotten this. That is really shit. Alright. Um, all I can hack is this and this camera. And you know, I'm getting one power per turn as well, so I might as well spend this one power as well to just, have to just hack this camera and get it out of the way. Um, right, let's move Decker in here. And let's move International over here as well. And close the door. I can't knock this guy out again, which is kind of annoying. I can't steal the security card, because Internationality didn't have one yet, and I could use it. So, for now, I'm going to pin this guy, I guess, and maybe move him off to the side as well. And 
this turn. Investigating the area. So this guy woke up. Now he's going to be running around the level trying to find us. That's really dangerous. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's move Decker in here. He can't use it just yet. But um, let's see if I can drag the security guard closer to this door. That would be good. Drop his body. Um, yeah. Decker can have a peek to see what's in here. Ah! There's a safe. But it, oh man, it's going to take three turns to, to hack through this thing. That's not good. Okay, so I'm going I'm just going to leave this one as it is. Alright, so Decker can move in position and steal the Site list, which is our objective. You've got it. Great. When you Sadly, activated we are that terminal, now. sent out an automated message to change up the guard duty. Be prepared for new patrol patterns. Yeah. Okay. So this guy is now investigating a curious event, which means this guy is going to come over here and see what happened, which is not that good, because I think he has enough movement points to come in here and discover. International and um, and the security guard, and I can't knock him out again because maybe I have to save my neural disruptor for this guy. Because if he moves all the way over here, he might be able to spot Decker. I'm not sure, but I'm going to try to drag the security guard just out of sight here. Luckily, I already started doing this; otherwise, it would be screwed. Or otherwise, this guy he would have found his body for sure. Which now um, we might we might just stay out of sight completely here. If we're lucky. Alright, so the other security guard is... Where is he going? What the hell? That's interesting. Okay. Alright, so I need to move International over here. Unlock the door. And maybe... I can... I could knock this guy out again, maybe. But I need to get as close to the elevator now as possible because in two turns we will probably have a guard spawn in here. Either in this location here, this location there. Is there another place that he might be coming from? Doesn't look like it. So there's two spawners here that he might come from. Alright. This might actually not have been the best of choices because this guy's going to wake up, but I might like he's probably going to look towards the the bench here. Otherwise international is going to have to double back and knock him out again. I have no idea what this guy is doing, but oh, oh, man. Happened? that is inconvenient. Alright, Decker, can I move you Okay, I have to move over here to knock him out again. He has to be knocked out because I can't move through the door otherwise. Alright. Um, let's move you over here. Close the door. To limit his view as much as possible. So we have a... Um, this guard is probably over here somewhere by now. That's really unfortunate. Um, because that means he might be able to move through here. And then he might spot Decker. So... I can't move Decker here because I'm afraid he's going to get spotted. I can't move him here, so it means I have to move him here or there. I'm just going to move him here, I guess. And then internationally, I'm going to move her into the corner. Um, let's have a peek around and see where this guy is. Yeah. Observe his movements. Yeah, exactly. So he's going to end up here next turn. And then I probably can't move past him again, so... Let's ambush him. Let's knock him out. Alright. That's one guy down. Yeah, okay. So there's the other guard. Where did... Ah, oh, of course. <laughs> that is the most inconvenient spot for him to spawn right now. Like, I really wished he would have spawned 
like here because that's where I'm moving away from but this is where I have to move towards so right international steal money because I need all the monies and I really really do um, Decker I need to move I need you to move as close as possible as well mm. I'll probably move him over there without getting spotted or getting any trouble but why take chances you know like and you don't you can't get cocky in this game because it will fuck you up quite badly uh, right, so we got lucky with this guy moving over in this direction but now we need to move this is bad because the guard is probably standing in the entrance way here and I cannot move in That is really, really shit. Because he's going to wake up next turn. This guy is probably going to move through here. Um, and there's no other door here, which is really, really annoying. Man, I think the best thing I can do here is to just move... I don't know, actually. Alright, let's um, speak around the corner. Let's observe his movements. He's going to... Oh man. He's going to end up just in front of the door. And then this guy is going to wake up. Uh, no, that's bad. I need to uh, pin this guy down so he doesn't wake up. And then I'm going to have to wait until this guy moves through the door and I can ambush him. That's the only option here, I think. Investigating. I just really hope this guy is not going to come through here as well, because then we would be really fucked. Alright. Observe his movements. He's going to move through here. Yeah, okay. I need to ambush him. Decker needs to stay put. Um, let's predict his movements. Let's see what... Ah, thank god he's going the other way. That is very fortunate. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh man, now he's coming our way. I need Decker to get... Can Decker get all the... Yeah, oh, that's good. I'm going to get away with this. <laughs> oh, I can't steal anything from him, apparently. That's too bad. Would have been nice to have some more credits. Mm, so I have a choice. I could knock out this guy again for... Well, he's not going to be knocked out for three turns if I do this again. So he's going to be knocked out for two turns if I do this again. But I can probably get away with just moving him into this room. Let's, um, let's do that. Let's move him over here. Close the door. This guy is not going to get all the way over here. He doesn't have enough AP, I think. But I'm going to be in ambush anyway behind the door. Let's move her a little bit further. Investigating area. I think somebody's down. Calling it in. Ah, uh, yeah. So they discovered that one guard is down. This guy is waking up. Um. All right. Let's move uh, international into the elevator and hopefully. Yep. Decker has enough AP as well to get in here. Alright. Exit that level. executive had a very interesting list of contacts. I'm sure they won't miss it. Whew. Now this game can get really tense. I think this game is really perfect for YouTube Let's Plays and stuff because you can get in such tense situations. It's really cool. I really like it. Alright, so all the security guards in this level were alerted. I got 3 out of 5 consoles, gained 31 power, used only 11, I hacked everything except for the one corporate safe, but I didn't quite open every one of them, no new items and programs, I stole some credits from guards and from safes, for a total of 560, which puts our net worth at, basically this is the scoring system, right, if you lose, then the net worth is your scoring system on how well you did. So even if you lose, you can improve your scores and your net worths and all that stuff. That's quite cool, actually. You can still somehow win by improving yourself. So, 
Um, I have 1060 credits now, which is good. I could use this to upgrade um, some of my character stats. Um, let's see. She's, she has hacking. And basically, if I go to level 3 in hacking, it gives me one extra power per console hijack. Or one extra AP. Mm. And then there's strength, which allows you to carry four items and it gives you improved drag speed. Which is really useful, actually. So I might just get strength for both of my characters here. Because it's pretty cheap and I could really use it. And it only sets me back 40... 40 credits from what I originally had, so... I've re-established contact good. with Monster. His network picked up the attack just before it hit us, and we're working to trace it back to the source. In the meantime, he's offered to sell us some of his more rarefied stock. Greetings. I don't often perform transactions face-to-face, -face, but Gladstone is an old friend. I'll contact you when anything becomes available. Thank you, Monster. If we find their central server, we may be able to bring them down. Or at least distract them long enough that they lose our trail. Continue scavenging operations, and I'll keep you posted as more intel develops. Alright. New missions popped up, but we'll save that for a later episode. I'm just gonna call it quits here for now, and I'll see you guys later.